Autobiographers and Diarists, Passage 1A, Thomas De Quincey, Confessions of an English Opium Eater. I here present you, courteous reader, with a record of a remarkable period in my life. According to my application of it, I trust that it will prove not merely an interesting record, but in a considerable degree useful and instructive. In that hope, it is that I have drawn it up and that must be my apology for breaking through the delicate and honorable reserve which, for the most part, restrains us from the public exposure of our own errors and infirmities. Nothing, indeed, is more revolting to English feelings than the spectacle of a human being obtruding on our notice his moral ulcers or scars and tearing away that decent drapery which time or indulgence to human frailty may have drawn over them. Accordingly, the greater part of our confessions, that is, spontaneous and extrajudicial confessions, proceed from demirepts, adventurers, or swindlers, and for any such acts of gratuitous self-humiliation from those who can be supposed in sympathy with the decent and self-respecting part of society. We must look to French literature or to that part of the German which is tainted with the spurious and defective sensibility of the French. All this I feel so forcibly and so nervously am I alive to reproach of this tendency that I have for many months hesitated about the propriety of allowing this or any part of my narrative to come before the public eye until after my death, when for many reasons the whole will be published, and it is not without an anxious review of the reasons for and again, against this step that I have at last concluded on taking it. Guilt and misery shrink by a natural distinct instinct from public notice, they court privacy and solitude, and even in their choice of a grave will sometimes sequester themselves from the general population of the churchyard, as if declining to claim fellowship with a great family of men and wishing in the affecting language of Mr. Wordsworth. Humbly to express a penitential Loneliness, it is well upon the whole, and for the interest of us all, that it should be so, nor would I willingly in my own person manifest a disregard of such salutary feelings, nor in act or word do anything to weaken them. But on the, on the one hand, as my self-accusation does not amount to a confession of guilt, so... On the other, it is possible that if it did, the benefit resulting to others from the record of an experience purchased at so heavy a price might compensate by, by a vast overbalance for any violence done to the feelings I have noticed and justify a breach of the general rule. Infirmity and misery do not of necessity imply guilt. They approach or recede from shades of that dark alliance in proportion to the probable motives and prospects of the offender. And the palliations known or secret of the offense in proportion as the temptations to it were potent from the first and the resistance to it in act or in effort, was earnest to the last. For my own part, without breach or truth of modesty, I may affirm that my life has been, on the whole, the life of philosopher. From my birth, I was made an intellectual creature, and intellectual in the highest sense my pursuits and pleasures have been, even from my schoolboy days. If opium eating be essential pleasure, and if I am bound to confess that I have indulged in it to an excess not yet recorded of any other men, it is no less true 
that I have struggled against this fascinating enthrallment with a religious zeal and have at length accomplished what I never yet heard attributed to any other man have untwisted almost to its final lengths the accursed chain which fettered me. Such a self-conquest may reasonably be set off in counterbalance to any kind or degree of self-indulgence. Not to insist that in my case the self-conquest was unquestionable, the self-indulgence open to doubts of cadistry, according as that name shall be extended to acts aiming at the bare relief of pain, or shall be restricted to such as aim at the excitement of positive pleasure.